Today's topic is the area of a rhombus or a kite, and we're going to start to get into the area of just any old regular polygon as well. So a couple big concepts here. Um, the area of a rhombus or a kite. Now, rhombuses and kites have very one important common characteristic. If you recall all the way back to our chapter on quadrilaterals, which was chapter 8, both a rhombus and a kite have diagonals that are perpendicular. Okay, sorry, trying to draw a right angle in there, but that doesn't seem to be working very well. So, let's undo that, and I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, right angle, right angle. All right. Still not lining up very well, but I guess we'll just have to live with it. There we go. Much nicer. Okay. So both of them have diagonals that are perpendicular. And as a result of that, they wind up with the same area formula. Because based on the lengths of their diagonals and the fact that the diagonals form right triangles. Without going into a tremendous amount of detail into why the formula works, which you can certainly look up in the book, or if you want me to explain it to you, I'd be happy to. But... Simply put, the area for each of these shapes is simply diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. This is a formula we can use for both the rhombus and the kite. Now, it's also a formula we could use for the square if we wanted to, which is kind of neat because the square is a rhombus. Now, normally squares, if we know the lengths of sides, that's good enough. But um, if we don't know the length of the side, but I do know the length of a diagonal in a square, I can use this formula to find the area of the square. I can't use this formula for rectangles. I can't use it for just regular parallelograms or other quadrilaterals or um, anything like that. We have to use this formula for uh, only for rhombuses, kites, and squares. All right, put it into practice very simply here. Uh, please note, some people struggle with this notation, but here the six with the bars on it means that's the entire diagonal. So that's the length of that entire diagonal, and the bars here on the eight show that that's the length of that entire diagonal. So we're giving the length of the entire diagonal. So the area here is simply diagonal one times diagonal two over two or 48 over 2, or 24 context meters squared. Same thing here. Um, diagonal 1 is 7 centimeters times 10 centimeters over 2. And 7 times 10 is 70. Half of 70 is 35. And the context is centimeters squared. It's really a very simple formula to use. So now you use it. Go ahead and find the area of this rhombus with these two full length diagonals. Well, you knew it wasn't going to be all that easy, so now we have to dive into regular polygons and finding the area of a regular polygon. But before we can do that, we have to start by dissecting a regular polygon and learning the names of parts. Okay, a regular polygon, remember, is one where all the sides are congruent. Okay, all the sides are congruent. And all the angles are congruent. That's what makes up a regular polygon. No matter how many sides and how many angles there are, all the, all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. All right, so if that's the case, we have a regular polygon. What I can do is if I start drawing in diagonals of that polygon, we very, very quickly split that polygon into triangles. And all of these triangles are exactly congruent, and all of these triangles are exactly isosceles. In fact, what you'll notice, if I put the center of a circle here and draw my circle out, the circle perfectly circumscribes the polygon. And the distance from the center of the polygon here to a vertex of the polygon is a radius of the circle, so we also call that the radius of our polygon. So we borrow the language from circles, 
to describe a part of the polygon because it is the radius of the circle that goes around the perfect polygon. So we call that the radius of our polygon, and any one side we just call a side. That's really shocking. Now, what do we know about this? Well, there's a lot of things going on here, but one thing we know about this is the radius of a the radius of a circle is a constant. So we know that this is an isosceles triangle. Every one of these triangles is an isosceles triangle. Not only do we know it's an isosceles triangle, but because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, same as the number of sides, okay, since there are eight of them, that each vertex angle here is the whole circle 360 divided by 8. In that case, that's 45 degrees. So every one of these angles is really 360 divided by the number of sides, which in this case winds up being 45 because it's an octagon. It would be different with a hexagon. That number would be different with a pentagon. It would be different with a decagon. It changes depending on the number of sides but it's always 360 divided by the number of sides. That's that vertex angle between the two radii, radii in our isosceles triangle. Guess what? If I know the vertex angle, I can figure out these other two angles, the base angles as well, because they have to be congruent. So with the case of the 45 here, I take 180 for the triangle minus 45 is 135, and half of that is 67 and a half. So now I know all the base angles of my triangle, of my isosceles triangle. So I know my base angles, I know my vertex angle. I'm really learning a lot here about this triangle very quickly. The next special segment we're going to talk about is this one, which goes from the center and is perpendicular to a side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that inside one of my special triangles. Now, we're going to call this segment the apothem of the triangle. You may hear some people call it apothem also. It's kind of potato, potato, two different ways of pronouncing the same word. I use apothem because I think it sounds like opossum, but with a lisp, an apothem. It does start with an A, though, where opossum starts with an O, so whatever. Um, but this opossum length, very clearly, goes from the center of the circle and is perpendicular to a side. And since this is an isosceles triangle right here, these two sides are congruent. We knew it, that these two angles were congruent. We know that it's evenly split. It's a bisector of that angle and a bisector of this side. It splits my side equally here. I get congruent triangles. Everything works wonderfully. It's all very special. So now I've got this right triangle to work with inside of my polygon. I've got my opossum here. I've got the radius of my polygon, and this is half the side of a polygon because the whole side, of course, is outlined here with a green dotted line extended. We also know this angle is half of a central angle. In this case, that would be half 45 or 22.5 degrees. We already figured in my octagon that this is 67.5 degrees. Well, guess what? Now if I know any, since I know all three angles, and I know it's a right triangle, if I know any of these three measurements, I can use trig to find an, another one or both of the other ones. Oh, boy, trig is going to be back. Yep. We're back to Sokotoa again, folks. That's going to be important here. It's a great review for the exam of Sokotoa, this next little bit. 
But for today, we aren't going to start solving the triangles yet. That's more of a topic for tomorrow. For today, I'm more concerned with just identification. So, in the diagram, ABCDA is a regular pentagon inscribed in triangle F. Find the each angle measure. All right, let's take a look at our picture. I'm going to expand my picture a little bit and move it over here so we can see it a little bit better. And it wants us to find certain things. Well, it's a pentagon. So how many isosceles triangles do I have here? I have five isosceles. One, two, three, four, and the one that's already being worked on here is five. Okay, five different isosceles triangles. So every central angle, every angle that has a, center, a vertex there at F is simply 360 over 5, which is 72 degrees. So when it asks me to find angle BFA or AFB, that is going to be 72 degrees. Next, it's going to ask me to find AFG. Well, guess what? That's half of my vertex angle here. So half of 72 is 36 degrees. And finally, angle GAF, which is this angle down here. And well, G, if I know this angle is 36 and this is 90, that gives me 126 degrees. So my remaining angle must be 54 because it must add up to 180. Okay. So that's kind of what's going on. We've got to figure out that triangle. Now, every pentagon is going to have angles with that measure, with those measures. Every regular pentagon, when I break it down, is going to have those measures. Just like every, every regular octagon, when I break it down, is going to have angles of 67.5, 22.5, and 90. You aren't expected to memorize them. You are expected to be able to figure them out. All right. Here's kind of some fun for you. Um, here's a square inscribed in a circle. So it's a perfect regular quadrilateral. It's a square. And I'm going to want you to identify the center, radius, and apothem and find a central angle of the polygon. Now, I'm not going to have you do all of that. That would, be, that would be a bit much in a multiple choice question. The center is obviously P of the polygon. A radius, I have two radii to choose from. It would be either PX or PY. The apothem is PQ. What I want you to do for your question is find the measure of that central angle. Now that we've done that, we can answer these other questions. Find X, P, Y. Well, guess what? That was that central angle you just found. And hopefully you recognize pretty quickly that's 90 degrees. X, P, Q is going to be half of 90, which is 45 degrees. And P, X, Q is that angle there. Well, if I got a 45 here and a 90 here, that's also going to be 45 degrees. So squares are kind of nice. They, they come out to 45, 90, 45, 90. Honestly, this is not a technique we usually use with squares. We have enough other formulas that can go with finding the area of a square. All right, so that's getting you ready for areas of polygons. But let's not forget and go back to our basic concept here for rhombuses and kites. The area formula for a rhombus and a kite is diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two that's when you're going to have to pretty much commit to memory. All right, we'll see you in class.